Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, thank you as always for all of your support. I appreciate you more than you know. If you like what you see today, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button. But for now, let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. All right, I have paint sticks. I used a whole bunch of them and Rich helped me cut them down into three inch pieces. I have 80 of them. We also reserved the little triangular ends that we cut off because I thought I was gonna be using them. I ended up not using, well, I used like four of them in the very end, but I thought I was gonna use them all at any rate, I have 80 of these larger sections that are three inch on the diagonal, if you will. Um, these are the larger paint sticks. I was able to get five sections out of each of the paint sticks and I have gotten them all flipped over so that the ruler part is face down. And now I'm just trying to figure out my pattern here. This was inspired by something that I saw online by Home Depot, actually. Um, it was uh, this wood design and I thought it was absolutely beautiful and I made it for a lot less. I think I used six packs of the paint sticks. They're a dollar a piece at Home Depot. I ended up with two leftover paint sticks um, and uh, yeah, then I am going to be using some different paints and wax to stain these in just a moment. But I kind of pieced it together. It took me a little figuring out. Um, I did realize that in creating this pattern, you want to make sure that you cut half of your paint sticks with the diagonal going one way and the rest of the, the other half going the opposite direction. So I think I realized that about halfway through um, the cutting. And so I ended up handing them to Rich in different ways. And I almost had it exactly right. In the end, you'll see that I do end up having to sand some things to, to get it worked out. But at first I thought I was gonna use all those little triangle pieces to fill in the edges and create an actual square. But ultimately I decided I actually preferred the jagged edges. I thought it gave it a little bit more interest. So I ended up going that route. Now I had this piece of wood that was 14 by 14. And at first I thought that was what I was going to be using, but I'm realizing, cause I haven't used all of the paint sticks yet. And I'm realizing I really needed a 16 by 16. So I went ahead and set that aside for the time being. And I said I was gonna work on getting everything stained <clears throat> stained or whitewashed, the colors that I needed. So I am very visual. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm kind of pulling them out into, I mean, it's not, they're not color blocks because they're not colored right now, but in my head, what the color blocks would be. So on that outer edge, those are going to be like a medium brown. The section that I'm picking up right now is going to be a darker charcoal color. And then the center is going to be a whitewash. And then ultimately the outer edge that I don't have laid out right now is also going to be the same whitewash as the center. So I'm trying to keep, <clears throat> excuse me, all of my groupings together and so that I can make sure that I um, have the right number of pieces with the right colors. <laughs> um, so this is how I did it. So I've got my Adirondack white, I have my black, and then I have my antique wax by Waverly. And I am using baby wipes. So just the same way that I use um, baby wipes with my wax, I am using them with my paint because I don't want the, I don't want to lose the, the wood grain. I really want this to be evident that it is a wood structure and I really want that wood grain to show through. So I just want a hint of the color. And so you can see I've got my white that I kind of pieced back together. Here I am going in with the antique wax 
did all of those in the antique wax and then i'm using the black now it looks much darker on the screen right here i'm going to see if i can get a better um angle for you or zoom in a little bit here so that i can show you it really was more like a charcoal and where i felt like i was getting it too dark i was able to just go back over it with the baby wipe some more in a clean spot on the baby wipe and took off more of that paint but it really turned out quite nicely as you will see in just a moment so you can see here a little bit better how the color was looking on here so I did have Rich help me cut down a piece of plywood from the garage. So I've got my 16 by 16 now that I'm going to be working with. And now it's time to piece it all together. Well, actually not quite because I realized I needed to whitewash my outer edge that I talked about before. So you can see all of my pieces laid out here. And once I was all done with that, then it's going to be time to put it together. And I am putting it together on this board again it's 16 by 16 so I'm gonna find center so I'm marking it at eight inches from top to bottom and from left to right and I'm just working on finding center so that I can make sure I start my work from the center I don't want to be off kilter um, or off center because if I'm off center my project is going to end up falling off the board on one side or one edge Hopefully that makes sense the way I'm trying to describe it. But you can see here, I'm marking it all different ways to identify center. And also, so I'll have guidelines, literally guidelines to start my project with. So I'm taking those first few pieces and I'm literally lining them up with those markings on the wood. And I'm gonna be using my Gorilla Glue wood glue to adhere all of these. I'm gonna have a really nice solid bond because I did not paint the back sides of these. At least for the most part, you're gonna see in a minute that I end up having to, to um, make some adjustments um, based on what I was saying before, how I didn't have them all cut completely 50-50 with the angle differences, but we managed and I'll show you how I fixed that. So I went ahead and continued to piece it all together. I got my center star, for a lack of a better term, set. And then I'm going to come in and it's kind of like putting a puzzle together, right? So making sure that I've got all of my pieces going in the right directions and getting it all laid out and then coming back in with my glue. So this was not difficult it was just a little time consuming but i found it very therapeutic and i enjoyed it i i really like projects like this and i will say that the end result in my humble opinion is stunning it was so worth it i love this piece this piece will find a spot in my home i haven't figured out where yet but i love this piece and i will be keeping it so once i had all of the charcoal laid down i'm now coming in with the pieces that were stained with the antique wax and again i just wanted to make sure that i had everything in place before i started gluing anything down because i want to make sure i didn't make any kind of a mistake so this was my process the entire time just getting everything in place and then coming back in with the glue <clears throat> And I was applying glue both to the bottom, sorry, I'm a little off uh, frame there, but to the bottom and then also to the little narrow edges so that it would seal in between the pieces as well. But just using a little bit of glue for that. I didn't want to have a lot of glue oozing out. Um, I got a little bit of that here and there, but I was able to wipe it away without a problem. You just want to be careful with with the glue on the edges because you don't want to have big globs um, kind of oozing out and damaging your your piece that you've been working so hard on so now i'm coming in clearly with the um whitewashed pieces and this is where i discovered i needed to flip some of them over so i am sanding off the little ruler um imprints if you will you can see that over on the right the the little ruler um, design that they have on the back of the paint sticks. I just went in, sanded that off. It comes off really easily. Went ahead, whitewashed the other side, and then I was able to place these down. 
and that is all it took for this project so it's kind of um you could certainly if you have a little hand miter saw you could certainly cut them that way that'll take you forever so we did use the electric miter saw for these i also wanted to be a little more precise and i felt like that was going to get me there so here are those little triangles i mentioned i went ahead and stained them with the charcoal color it was the black but diluted right and putting them into place on the four sides just in the center of the four sides i just thought it would look neat <laughs> so now i'm coming in with some wire this is left over from my in my stash it was actually trash if you will it came off of a roll of chicken wire and i saved it thinking i might be able to use it for something and voila so i'm taking my um staple gun and the staples didn't want to go all the way into the plywood so I gave them a little help with my hammer <laughs> afterwards and I'm using two staples I just want to make sure that this doesn't come out and you can see clearly the wire it just slipped right out of the uh out from under so I went ahead tucked that back in nailed that down it was not going to be coming out after that and then I twisted the end of the wire back around itself to just give it some additional security and that was it. Let me know what you think. DIY number two. All right, I have these one by twos from the Home Depot and I'm lining them up at an angle and I'm using another piece of wood to mark what that angle is at the floor and the wall here. I, I, it took me forever to figure out how I was going to do this and then I suddenly had this epiphany. <laughs> so, and it worked really well. I am creating a blanket ladder and so I wanted to be leaning up against the wall. So that was how I figured out what the angles should be at the base and then up against the wall. And now I'm figuring out what length I want my dowels to be. I've got these dowels that I'm going to be using. You can see I have five of them there. I ultimately used only four of them and I'm marking them off at the 16 inch, no, 18 inch mark sorry i started thinking 16 and then i went to 18 inches so i cut those down sanded off the edges and then i went ahead and used my um, antique wax by waverly for all of the pieces so i did both the legs as well as the what would you call those they're not really treads because we're not going to be treading on them, but I think you know what I mean. The crossbars, if you will, of the ladder. But got that all done. And then I went and grabbed some screws. These were what we had at home. They're probably a little bit long for this project, but I made it work. I got my drill, found a drill bit that was going to work for the size screw. And I set into screwing into all my dowels. This is really important because if you try to screw into your dowel without having a pre-drilled hole, good luck. <laughs> because if you can manage to get it to screw in, you are likely going to crack the dowel. So it's really important to drill your holes. This is probably not the safest way to do it, the way that I'm doing it right here. I, it's probably better if you can put it in a vise of some sort and then drill it, but yeah so just be be careful if you do something like that so now i'm lining up my two legs for my ladder and i've got them on top of the dowels so that they're raised off of my work surface so i don't drill into my work surface and it didn't go all the way through both of them together but it did start a pilot hole for me there so i was able to just continue through and i knew that they were going to be at the same height now I'm measuring, I had already measured, it was 14 inches down. I'm making sure that my screw hole was still 14 inches down. And then I'm, I measured another 14 inches between the two holes. So each of my treads, again, I'm not really sure what the correct term is. They're going to be 14 inches apart. 
So now I am starting my screw through the hole and then adding my dowel and I'm just gonna take my time and screw that right in. And my drill kept slipping a little bit here and there, but just take your time and yeah, little, little determination <laughs> never hurts. And then I went ahead and did the other side. I got that screw started, inserted the dowel so it was all lined up and then just got it um, screwed right in. And then there were times where I did decide I needed a little bit more pressure. So I lifted it right up and I screwed it in from the top. So that just made it a little bit easier, that angle. And that was all that I did. And look at how fun this is. I am proud of this piece. It was such a simple project and just, I love it. But let me know what you think. DIY number three. All right, I have an Arteza black canvas here. You could certainly use a white canvas and then paint it black, or you could use different colors. It really doesn't matter. And then I had put a piece of wood underneath the canvas, and you'll see why in a little bit. And then I had cut off of my Cricut machine this design that I'm using as a stencil. Clearly it was white on white, so we'll move along to getting it onto the transfer tape. And once I had that all peeled off, you'll be able to see this was something that um, I saw at the Hobby Lobby and I thought it was adorable and I had to do it and you're gonna see why in a second if you followed me for any amount of time but um, got it all up on the transfer tape and then applied it to my canvas look at how cute this is it makes me laugh because not so much with Sammy but with our lab Sunny oh my goodness I think that she would just eat nonstop 24 seven if we allowed her to, and she is constantly begging for food. So this is perfect. It is already hanging in my kitchen over where the dogs um, have their food bowls. And so, yeah, <laughs> but I went ahead and burnished this and that was why I had that piece of wood underneath here. And I was a little nervous about how this might work because I have tried in the past to use stencil vinyl on canvases and it it's really challenging. It doesn't like to stick. This is removable vinyl that I'm using here and it actually worked really well. It stretched a little bit in certain places. So I ended up having to be careful with the way that I applied my paint for stenciling, which I'll get to in a second, but so much easier to use the um, regular vinyl as opposed to the stencil vinyl for this type of a project. Went ahead and burnished it. That's why I've got that wood under there. So I'm, I've got something to burnish against. And I'm coming in obviously with black right? And you're wondering if you haven't seen this method before, why? Because my canvas is black. Yes, canvas is black. So I am coming in with black in case I have any bleeding. If I have any bleeding, it's going to bleed black. So it will not be visible. And then once that's all nice and dry, I'm going to come in with my white. I did drip a little bit in the middle of my canvas. So you'll see me kind of dipping into that white that's down, you know, by where my wrist was, but coming in with light coats, you can see a lot of that black is kind of showing through, but what I will do is I'll go over it. I think I gave it three, maybe four coats, definitely three coats because you can see the black is still shining through and this on the second coat, it was a little bit better. The third coat was better. I just kept doing it until I felt like I had good coverage and then it was time to go ahead and peel it back and see how it turned out. And again, I love this. It makes my heart happy. So peeled that all away. Now the paint is still wet. 
So I just had to be real careful. So as I was weeding out all those little bits and pieces, just being super careful not to smudge the paint and not to put paint down where I didn't want it. And then just worked my way around carefully so that I didn't stick my hand in the paint and smudge it. Now, the original that I saw had just a simple white border, but I decided I was going to do something a little bit more fun. So I'm just taking a flat edged brush and putting little dash marks for lack of a better term. So very, very simple. You could create whatever kind of a border you would want for this, but I just thought that this would be really fun and sweet and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So let me know what you think of this. I love it. And like I said, it's already hanging up in my kitchen. And now it's time for a shout out time out. Sweet Rose, loving these little hearts and this beautiful tiered tray. Great job. And beautiful Harriet, some crafts. I'm getting caught up from Easter, you guys. And cute Geraldine, all these St. Patty's Day crafts. I love it. And great brandy, such sweet spring and Easter projects. Nice Valerie. Again, everybody's doing such beautiful work. Thank you so much for sharing with me. If you would like a shout out, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. All right, I have a Dollar Tree sign and some clothes pins also from the Dollar Tree. I have my, um, what was a uh, black paint? Yes, <laughs> kind of fell over there. Got my parchment paper. I went ahead and folded it um, in half again. It was already folded in half, folded in half again, adding my clothes pins just so that I have something for them to hold on to so or for me to hold on to so I don't end up with paint all over myself as I do this so I got them all painted completely black and hung them up to dry now I am going to work on my sign just popped off the little egg shape and then I noticed that this is just a paper that could peel mostly peel up yeah it was a little bit of a struggle in some places but we we made it work <laughs> and I was going to be covering that back side anyway so even though it wasn't the prettiest thing when I was done peeling all the paper off it's going to get hidden and it's all going to be fine in the end so now on the back side I'm going to go ahead and fill in the holes with my hot glue because I was being lazy and didn't want to go and get the spackle that was upstairs <laughs> so once that was cool I took my little razor blade from the Dollar Tree and just shaved off the excess and it worked like a charm all good now i'm taking my waverly chalk paint and plaster and i'm going to give this two good coats now i tend to go in one direction for the first coat and then i like to go in the opposite direction for the second coat in my head it it's that it gives it better coverage i don't know if that's true or not but I don't know. I seem to feel like it gives better coverage when I go the opposite direction. So at any rate, I am taking my craft paper, giving it a really good crease at the point where I need to, to cut it off. And then I'm just taking a sharp edge. You can use a knife for this. You can use your scissors. Um, sometimes you can use a cake spatula if you've got a really good crease, but it's just an easy way to get a really nice straight edge as opposed to like using the scissors to cut it I mean so taking that and I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the back of my sign with my wood glue now sometimes I will use hot glue to do this but I find that it ends up leaving a, a ridge or a little bump um, along where the glue was so I decided you know what I'm going to start using my wood glue because it gives it a really good seal um, and you don't get that bump that you get with the hot glue so just going ahead and applying all of this 
And because even though it takes longer for this to set up, um, I think it'll take a good 15 minutes at least for the glue to be dry enough that you don't have to worry about it popping off. But this is the back, right? And I'll be able to continue working on it as long as I just keep the back flat on my table, which I intend to do. So it'll be good. So once I have that glued on there, I'm going to grab my um, self-healing mat and I'm also going to grab my craft, craft knife and trim off all of the excess, just running that along the edge of the sign. And it just makes a really nice clean edge and everything is nice and neat. I now have my front side completely painted. My back side is completely covered with the craft paper. So we have a really nice um, project surface on which we can work. So this is just getting trimmed away. And then we'll be able to go ahead and move on to the next step. So I have all of my clothespins that are now dry and I'm going to line them up on the sign. I've got my wood glue there again, but I'm not going to use it just yet because I'm really just lining these up to see where they will rest or live. So I know where to put my words. So I had cut this out on my Cricut Joy. It's, um, again this is something that I saw at the Hobby Lobby that I just thought was really cute um, and it definitely applies to our house because we are constantly looking for lost socks so this will be hanging up in our laundry room and hopefully it will help us to reunite all of the little lost socks but I'm just lining it up here to see where it needs to fit and uh, went ahead and applied it to my transfer tape, lined it up on the project. Of course, I'm coming out with my little ruler again because I have to make sure that everything is centered. And once I am satisfied with where I have it, I went ahead and burnished it, got that all peeled away from the with the transfer tape, got that peeled away. And then I came in and was able to do my stenciling. I am going to stencil this in black. I did not come in this time with my um, plaster first because I felt like I had a really good seal and I was holding my breath and crossing my fingers and it, it turned out just fine. <laughs> so I came in with, again, but light coats it's almost like a dry brush with my sponge right i use cosmetic sponges for this oh yeah and then i lost power the whole house went out i didn't know what happened i've got my little flashlight from my phone i'm like oh no so i ended up having to do the reveal without you guys i'm sorry but i had no power and i didn't want the paint to dry and then me like peeling paint away with the stencil <laughs> but it all worked out so now I am getting all of my little clothespins lined up again. I've got my ruler here so I know where everything needs to go. Using my wood glue to apply it to the, just the top half of the clothespin and then the rest of the clothespin is hanging over the edge. So very, very simple project, but I think it's super cute. And I think I started to tell you that I saw this at the Hobby Lobby, so it was inspired by something I saw there. Um, but yeah, and then I just had to make sure that I let that sit and dry and not touch it <laughs> until it was completely dry. So here's me being lazy again because I didn't want to go up and get the drill, which was out in the garage at this time. So I was using my little pokey tool from the Dollar Tree and now I've gotten a, a nail out of my stash and I am banging a nail through it with a paint stick behind so I don't nail into my work surface. So, you know, this is called where there is a will, there is a way or lazy, whichever you want to say, but at least I'm giving you options, right? If you don't have a drill, here's another way that you can make a, a hole. And if you don't have one of those fancy hole punches that punch through everything, Here's another way that you can create a hole for your project. Yeah, I I have no excuses, you guys. I really don't. Um, just, yeah, lazy. But I made it work and got it all situated. And so once I had my holes all done, yeah, a little bit of struggle there. But once that was all done, I went and grabbed this chain out of my stash. This is from a Dollar Tree hanging plant holder. 
I think that's what it's called. It's like a basket, a metal basket at the Dollar Tree that you can get to, to hold a hanging plant. And this is the chain that came with it. So I kind of disassembled it <laughs> and reassembled it the way that I wanted it. And I'm using the little hooks. I'm sorry, I'm out of frame here. I'll show it to you better in a second. But I hooked it onto the sign through the hole that I had just created, made sure that it was nice and secure. And then I went ahead and took off that hook that's in the center there. All you need is a little pair of needle nose pliers, and then you can just kind of um, pry it open enough to get that hook out of there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the other little attachy thing. I don't know what you call that, the fastener. I don't know, but I hooked that on through the other hole so you can see it's there. Um, and then I attached the chain lengths together so that um, I had a sufficiently long chain. So hooking that together and then I'll use my little needle, needle nose pliers to, um, well, I guess I had to open it up again a little bit more. But then I will also seal it back up again, just with a little squeeze there. So really pretty simple. And then I'm looking for the length of the chain that I need. I was a little bit shy when I first took that off because I forgot I had to drop it all the way down to get it into the little fastener hook. So um, yeah, just had to get one more little link, get that hooked on there attached it to the rest, sealed it shut, and I was golden. That was it. Such a cute little project, but let me know what you think. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the projects. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment because it really does help my channel to grow because it helps YouTube to notice my video and push it out to other people. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope that you'll consider hitting that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.